I think there's one common thing that we've taken so much from so many great role models around us that it's almost like, I know Sook and I feel this way, we talk about it all the time. And it's almost our duty to try to give some of what we've learned and been taught by role models ahead of us back to our community. Um, while we might not think it's like a big deal, just a couple words here and there, a go a long way. And then you hear, you get, you get some feedback saying, Hey, you really, you really changed my trajectory by, and, and we're just sitting here like, listen, we're just, we're just trying to get back. We move the change. You hear what I'm saying? Real players can relate. Cause they the ones that was playing. Be great. Be just great. wait. Yeah. We be really in the field. Really. Now we really on the mic. Speaking truly how we feel. Damn. For real. Yeah. Screaming hut one, hut two. Huh. Tell me what you gonna do. Yeah. Move the Chains is back, a presentation of Dolman Building Materials and RBC. As always, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Matt Baker with you from bclions.com. And um, today we're going to speak with a couple of uh, players whose contributions to the BC Lions extend way beyond the football field. Uh, because we've talked about it in these previous episodes, how a major pillar of the Lions brand is um, the goal of building stronger and better communities. A lot of that is what we do out in the community, specifically uh, the hundreds of school visits that go on uh, in the off season predominantly. And in the last couple of years, we've taken some of these programs to the island, to the interior, and two of those individuals who were very proud to have as great BC Lions ambassadors to these programs, uh, two offensive linemen. What is it about the offensive linemen always giving back in the community? But we love it. Sook Chung and Andrew Pearson. Gentlemen, uh, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having us, Matt. Appreciate it. Yes, my pleasure. And um, we'll hit on a couple of key topics here uh, over the next 15, 20 minutes. But Sook, your name came up in the last episode we recorded with uh, Rob Ray from the Surrey School District. And, um, you know, don't have to tell you the demographics of Surrey have become um, a lot more diverse over the years, specifically with the Indo-Canadian South Asian community, which you are proudly a part of. And he mentioned you as a role model to those kids. Uh, What goes through your mind when you hear people say that? Yeah, I just want to say thanks, Rob, for those kind words. and. yeah, you know, I just try to do my best best I can with the platform I'm provided with. The, like you said, the BC Lions do a great job of getting into the community, going to over 100 plus schools. Uh, Andrew and I both, you know, we've been busy flying to the uh, islands. I mean, fearing to the islands, flying to uh, 30 BC, Cranbrook, things of that nature. And, you know, <laughs> growing, growing up, I do understand that, you know, we have a predominantly South Asian community in Surrey where football, you know, isn't the number one sport we watch or anything like that. But it is nice to know that, you know, that teachers and people, other community leaders are, you know, view me as a role model for the kids. I, I you know, I just try to do my best I can with the platform I'm provided with. And it does mean a lot to me to give back to any community, whether that's the South Asian community or whether that's my local community here in Port Coquitlam and, you know, this year has been really cool. Like I mentioned before, we got to fly around some places I've never even been in BC and <laughs> give back. And it's pretty cool to see the kids that, you know, they, you know, in Cranbrook, they probably haven't been to a lot of BC Lions games, but they still know who we are and they're just as excited to see us as we are to see them. So um, in the past, we've had Jazz Dillon here. Uh, Cody Husband has a South Asian background uh, on his mother's side. Do you hear from a lot more of these young kids that you've interacted with um, saying that they want to pursue this as a career as well? How much has that grown in recent years in your mind? You know, I think uh, I'm growing up, it's, you know, harder to convince, you know, your immigrant parents to get into football. My parents just wanted me to play sports, and I'm very, very thankful for them to just allow me to play any sport I could, you know. And... Maybe, you know, it's not as available in our community, but, it, it you know, I do see more more kids trying out football, whether, you know, whether they like it or not. I see a lot more basketball players, a lot of good basketball athletes coming out of that community. And uh, whether it's football or any sport, I just hope that, you know, the Lions can cur- encourage uh, anyone to take up sport and, you know, try it out, try something new out, and maybe you'll like it, whether that's football, basketball, or anything. And I'm just a big believer in team sport. And, you know, football did a lot, has done a lot for me in my 
career and made me some of my best friends. And it's a sports are a great community to community to be a part of. And uh, like Andrew and I have this platform being in this community, giving back is pretty cool. Yeah, Andrew, we'll, we'll turn it over to you for a minute here now. Um, for those that may not be as familiar, you're entering your fifth season with the club. Yeah. Yeah, um, going in, or, or yeah, sixth season, fifth sixth season. year, yeah, I know. You lose track after a couple, yeah. But unfortunately, we lost a season, but we won't go down that road. It should be your, we'll, we'll call it your sixth year with the organization. Sure. Uh, don't don't use that season word, but you, uh, you've established yourself as one of the better community guys on this team. We always seem to have one. Uh, a lot of guys that came before you, we're good with these programs that Sook and yourself know very well, but what made you want to contribute in the schools and sending these positive messages to young kids in today's world? You know, I, I, I think one of the biggest things is that if you ask around our, our locker room, I think there's one common thing that we've taken so much from so many great role models around us that it's almost like, I know Sook and I feel this way. We talk about it all the time and, it's almost our duty to try to give some of what we've learned and been taught by role models ahead of us back to our community. Um, while we might not think it's like a big deal, just a couple words here and there, a go a long way. And then you hear, you get, you get some feedback saying, Hey, you really, you really changed my trajectory by, and, and we're just sitting here like, listen, we're just, we're just trying to give back. I do remember growing up in Kingston, you know, there's, there's a couple of great BC alumni that um, come from my high school, even Holy Cross. Uh, Brent Johnson, Tim Cronk, and and so you hear about some of these guys and the, what they do when they come back. And I remember Rob Bag, who uh, played at Frontenac, another high school in Kingston, coming back and just talking to us. And I was like, "That's so cool!" Like how he just comes back and everyone's listening. And and I wanted to use my platform for as long as I was playing. I didn't know how long when I started doing the community stuff. I didn't know how long this would last for. Uh, I'm extremely grateful that it's lasted as long as it has, and hopefully in the future. I just wanted to touch as many people in, in my own unique way as possible and make sure that I try to make my impact while I had this platform. Um, allow you both to talk about the specific programs uh, that you're a part of and what you like most about them. Again, we encourage listeners to go back our previous episode. We spoke with Rob Ray as well as Jamie Terrace, who uh, spearheaded a lot of these programs over the years. But uh, Andrew, we'll start with you. Uh, tell us more sure. about the programs you're a part of and, and what you love most about them so yeah there's i don't know if there's really a program i'm not a part of um mm. but i'll tell you about i'll tell you about the ones that i'm most passionate about uh last year brian burnham kind of uh helped create this team up to end racism program and, and i think it's a really cool opportunity to go into schools and say hey look life is kind of like a football team you got people from all different cultures height sizes everything and we come together for a common goal and that's for us is to win the great cup but we challenge the students to uh team up to end racism and it's really cool to have someone that's you know never experienced racism and i'm saying you know i come in here and i'm with a, a teammate of color and they're telling their ex experiences and i come in and say hey i've never experienced those things not because of who i am as a person or my character but because of, because of the color of my skin I think it really affects in, in especially in the recent years with uh, the George Floyd uh, stuff that really cult, kind of accumulated and cultivated this program. I think it's something that we need to keep this conversation going, how Asian hate was up during COVID, I think like 700%. Yeah. So there's there's certain, and, and I know Move the Chains, you guys talked about with Brian Chu and all this, it, it, the, having these conversations with students and having role models that come in and talk about it, I think really uh, helps you know, challenge them and say, Hey, we need more, we need more leaders. Um, the other thing that I, uh, Sook and I work uh, uh, closely with is uh, be more. And I'll let Sook talk more about be more and why he's passionate about that. Yeah. Be more than a bystander. Um, one of the greatest uh, partnerships I think this club has ever done uh, partnering with the, the ending violence association um, to do, help spread um, the awareness on the importance of preventing uh, gender-based violence. Uh, so yep. uh, your experiences uh, with these presentations and um, and how important it is to you. Yeah, so that's a big program I'm a part of and actually just the only program I'm part of this off season. And 
I think a lot of passion towards that program. And I remember, you know, the Lions coming up to my high school talking and it just meant a lot for us to see pro level athletes coming to high schools and, you know, spreading a good message. And when I got the opportunity in 2019 to be a part of this, uh, you know, I stepped up, uh, public speaking was something I wasn't really good at or even a little bit scared of. And, uh, you know, I've gotten to get better at that skill and, and still talk about something I'm very passionate about. And we, you know, our main message is, you know, we, we got to create these communities we want. So Andrew and I, we go to these schools and we really talk about, you know, holding each other accountable and being leaders in our community. But, you know, but we also want to let these kids know and ourselves know that there's resources available and, you know, talking to someone, talking to a professional, whether you're going through something at work or at school or at home, you know, it's very important to use those resources and we get a ton of great feedback and we also do a breakout session after these um, uh, presentations with the, you know, the leaders of each school and we go through some extra scenarios that sometimes they may encounter in the future and sometimes they won't, but, you know, we really get to brainstorm and really have a private session with these kids and it, it goes a, it goes a long way and, and Andrew and I have both seen the feedback from it where you know we've impacted someone directly or even mm -hmm. in the future we've come back to that school a couple of years later and say hey you got you know they would tell us a story on how they stopped something on their sports team or in their school and that's exactly what we want we want to encourage kids to be more than a bystander and stand up for each other yeah so that's such a good point like it's it's always it always like you always feel a certain type of way when you have like a teacher or someone come up and say, thank you so much for doing this. Like that, yeah. that always just makes it so worth it. And uh, like, thank you for being a, like, especially with be more. It's like, thank you for being a male and talking about this. Like that always just makes mm -hmm. me, you wouldn't be surprised how many times we, we hear that. So um, it's pretty cool that we get the opportunity and the platform to do this kind of stuff. Um, and, and just to touch on another thing, it's like, one thing that's this year has been really, really cool to see is how many guys have stepped up. Like normally there's probably about like, you know, six, I don't know, eight maybe, but this year there's been a lot of guys that stepped up and really, uh, really challenged them themselves to do public speaking. Like, so, you know, a lot of us, that's not our strength. We're, we're out there playing football. <laughs> we're not public speakers, you know, there, there's, so it takes work. It takes practice and it's not easy stepping in front of 500, 600 you get a full auditorium up there. It gets intimidating. So uh, it's pretty cool to see how many uh, players of young people are, are definitely working towards uh, doing this program. I was surprised, uh, Sook, to hear that public speaking wasn't your strength because I, I, can, I know this firsthand. Trash talking on the field, you're one of the best <laughs> there is. Keep, you're, you're always clean, of course, but yeah. <laughs> kind of I mean, uh, contrast. It's, it's yeah. different stages, you know? Exactly. Be a little bit more exactly. professional. <laughs> the, the locker room is where I'm more comfortable, but I've gotten comfortable in front of the gyms. And but mm -hmm. you know, it is a skill you have to learn and you have to practice that. And Andrew and I have sat in the room and got the script down pretty good over the last years now. But at first, it does take a couple of practices. You know. Yeah, it's yeah. funny because we always hear it too. It's like, oh, you you're not good at public speaking, and and I you you hear it all the time. It's like. Like, no, the first couple of times we do this, it takes them like, you know, we have to practice it like 15, 20 times for it to get somewhat comfortable with the topic, let alone to be able to stand up front of people. That's very well said. And, and um, while, we, while we're still on this topic, um, one of the things Rob said in, in the previous episode we did was a lot of these kids, you know, they're at the age where they don't want to hear from their parents. They don't, you know, they hear from their parents too much. And where you guys come in, any professional athlete who goes to talk is you are viewed as a role model and people might say, okay, this is someone other than my parents saying this. It must be important. How much do you guys think of that when you're sending these messages yeah. out in the public? For me, uh, I could definitely relate to that. I think, you know, my parents were on my case all the time when I was in high school about you know, stay in my books, academics, all the stuff that, you know, your parents tell you to do. But when you hear from a professional athlete who's, you know, going into the role or doing something that you want to achieve or, you know, just hearing it from a professional athlete, I think it means 
it means a little bit more than you realize, hey, you know, my parents aren't telling me the right things. And, you know, your teachers are trying to guide you the right places. It's just, it gets repetitive, of course. But, I mean, Andrew and I will take that opportunity any day if that's what we have to do to come in. Uh, you know, use our platform and spread spread the same message, but it comes from us. That's cool with us, as long as you know we're vocalizing that. And I know I know it gets repetitive at a young age, but you know your your teachers aren't there to not mm-hmm. guide you to like direction. I know mine were, and I was a little stubborn in the beginning, but I do realize that it helped me a lot. Well said. Yeah. <laughs> well, this I um. Know. Yeah, guys, this this has been uh, fascinating uh, to get to learn uh, more, more about why this is so important to you. And uh, I think we're going to have to have you back on to maybe dive a little bit deeper into a couple of those that we hit on and to talk about how, uh, you know, maybe interact with your teammates in the locker room on a couple of these issues. So uh, we appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for having us, Matt. Yeah, I appreciate it, Baker. Move the Chains uh, presentation of Doman Building Materials and RBC, and we will aim to get Sook and Andrew Pearson on uh, for a little sequel in a short time. What up, RP? Let's turn it up one time. You did. We move the change. You hear what I'm saying? Real players can relate because they the ones that was playing. Be great. Be Just great. wait. We yeah. be really in the field. Really. Now we really on the mic. Speaking truly how we feel. Damn. For real. Yeah. Screaming hut one, hut two. Huh. Tell me what you gon' do. Yeah. Coming off that edge, only way to stop is hold. Only you. Way. Never let the gatekeepers control you. Never. Once you lose your voice, now they definitely know they own you. But not I. Not Rob me. Phillips coming so fly. Pick yeah. six on the way. When that balls in the sky. They say time is money, and I wonder why. Now I know that's a goddamn lie. Let's go. Come and get game from the, the chains. Everybody love it when you move the chains. Haters hate to see me really do my thing. Move the chains, move the chains. Let's go. The, the number one podcast Move the chains yeah. Do my thing this dough You know how it go Grab you know. a seat and tune in Then tell me what you know Please. Back when T.I.P. said Get it on the flow R.P. was on B.C. Putting on a show yeah. For show For Screaming sure. touchdown Touchdown, touchdown. Uh-huh. Everything you want now Fans be the chain gang Game every month every now month. Don't even try to front now These new dudes be something like my son uh, now. Come on, now I'm better than ever The game that we speak Gotta, gotta be clever Ball Hard, no matter the weather I cheese for the pics while I'm counting this cheddar uh-huh. I'm my mama, boy, I never will let her So you know I gotta get up and run Just, just come to... and get came from the move the chains Everybody love it when you move the chains Haters hate to see me really do my thing Move the chains, move the chains Let's go Move the chains The number one podcast Move the chains, do my thing Come and get came from the move the chains. Everybody love it when you move the chains. Hey, this ain't to see me really do my thing. Move the chains, move the chains. Let's go. Move the chains. The number one podcast. Move the chains, do my thing.